Hello everyone, welcome to Renovating Kerbin in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. By renovating Kerbin, I mean making it look better. And the first way I'm going to be making it look better is to implement the trains that I made for real solar system and implement them for the resized Kerbin in JNSQ. So this is 3.2x scale or something like that. And we're going to see how it looks. I've implemented one of those terrains, the Tampico area, and I've placed it fairly close to the stock space center area in JNSQ and we're going to take a look though I've also placed not there uh, I've also placed a uh, launch site so we have a Tampico runway and there's also a Tampico launch site and so we're going to use this plane to take a look at it uh, so this is the install with JNSQ and realism overhaul this is a realism overhaul plane we've got realistic engines these are actually the engines off of the Concorde and uh, this is one of my engines, but it uses methane and oxygen and we're not fully fueled here uh, to make it easier to fly. And so there's my first space plane in this context in JNSQ with realism overhaul, and we'll see how it goes. However, I should note that I did discover one problem with the install that I had introduced in the previous video. So the JNSQ RO install I had linked uh, the CCAN. I have to say to leave off AJE extended, that's Advanced Jet Engines extended. The reason being, it seems to get rid of some of the Advanced Jet Engine engines and also gets rid of all of the realism overhaul intakes for reasons I do not understand. But if you want any intakes at all, and uh, normally with Advanced Jet Engines, you'll just see the stock intakes here that you're used to. So no problems with that. Uh, but there were problems with AJE Extended, so just leave that mod out if you saw the other video. So anyway, without further ado, I'll talk more about it as we uh, take off with this from... Actually, the shuttle launch site is what I implemented as the Tempico runway, so let's see. So my idea is that I'm going to have these trains. It might not be to everybody's taste. Uh, they, the, you know, it, there's a boundary to them. And so they don't mesh exactly with the stock terrain. And that's a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a problem that it doesn't mesh with the stock terrain perfectly, right? There's no transition between this Tampico terrain that you see here and the stock terrain, which is plain. But it's sort of nice having the detailed terrain. So I think it's worthwhile. It's not that big, it's under 200 meg for a patch like this. So we can easily have multiple patches like this around. Uh, as far as how much of Kerbin it covers, I mean, if you were trying to cover all of Kerbin at this scale, it, we wouldn't be able to. For stock Kerbin though, it might come, up, uh, come out to be close. Now, I need to ask a question of more knowledgeable people in this area. Which mod is trying to tell me to train them? Because, like, I don't have RP1 or anything like that in here. Why Why is something asking me to train them? Uh, that's not a Kerbal Health thing, is it? Or is it USI now? Who Who's responsible for this? I don't know. Anyway, we have a controller on here, so it doesn't matter. But I'm just wondering which of the many mods I have, and I'll put the links in the, the CCAN links again in the video description, but ignore AJE Extended. Um, I'm wondering which ones of these is to blame so that I can get rid of it. <laughs> anyway, but uh, Mr. Rigapa, if it doesn't do anything more significant, of course. Uh, Mr. Rigapa is on and throttle up and ignition. Now, this plane has had a tough time flying, I have to say. It is pretty dense and heavy because it's full. Well, not completely full, but pretty darn full of methane and oxygen. Eek. Stay on the runway. So it's rather heavy. And delta wings aren't wonderful. You gotta get to a very high speed before rotating. Even then, it doesn't seem to like to take off. That's a problem with 
far sometimes. You need really high speeds to take off. Stock, stock, you don't. It's rougher with far, I think. Anyway, we don't want to guzzle the fuel completely. So the idea is that we're going to have nice drains. Oh, and I implemented uh, Black Rack's volumetric clouds here. So instead of the cloud stuff that came with JNSQ, I deleted that. And we've got Black Rack's volumetric clouds. I might not want to have deleted everything about the clouds, like the clouds on other planets. I don't know if Black Rack's volumetric clouds covers the other planets. So I'll have to check. So or the auroras and stuff like that. I assume so, but maybe not all of the JNSQ planets, so yeah, I do have to take a look at that. But for now, at least we've got nicer puffy clouds, though not too many today. And in map view, well, we've got this hex system. I assume that's rational resources doing that. I, I'm not thrilled with that, but Anyway, there's something doing that, too. So this is my Tampico terrain. I will make improvements to it. But one thing I want to do is make more city things. I created this city before. And it's fairly lightweight. But what I can do is just have different modules of it. In other words, we've already got the textures. We don't have to have new textures for new cities. We just use the same buildings and the same textures and move them around a little bit to make new areas. So that'll be a new mesh. But the meshes are simple because they're just cubes. So there it is, nice little city. I've got the buildings made and we just have to plop them in various places. There's a factory there, a couple of skyscrapers, well, quite a few skyscrapers. Not many residential areas. I need to get trees. I have trees. I can do trees multiple ways. I can make my own. Or I also have a Unity asset pack with trees. I think that might be a little bit quicker to do. And trees are trees, so. I also have some low polygon packs that might be useful. If we really want to have a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, the train at this level isn't great, but mostly we're going to be doing rocket launches anyway. And it's still better than the non-detailed stock train, I feel. But again, not everybody might have the same taste I do. But for my grand scheme, imagine not only this sort of thing, l like those buildings, not, not just that sort of thing on Kerbin, but instead of being the first one to land on somewhere like Duna, what if you were a company and there was already a city on Duna, like that? Now, it'd be in uh, domes and stuff like that, but uh, the way it would be modded would be similar to that, with similar detail. And you would be supplying that city with stuff and getting stuff from that city. And basically the city acts like a resource converter, like the fuel cells and stuff like that. You put some resource in, you get some other thing out. And so the city would operate like that. You could use uh, simple logistics in order to transfer the resources into the city once you get there, land some lander there with whatever resources you've got, and maybe it gives you something equivalent of money. So that's the idea. So that's the grand scheme of renovating both Kerbin and other places. That's not going to be easy, but I think it's doable given the tech demo I have, if you will. So anyway, I think it'd be good to try and get this to a higher altitude and see if it can make orbit or something. I don't know if it can. I haven't tried that. It's underfueled right now in order to get off the runway. 
It might need like J2 or something or a longer wing. I did not expect that this direction was east. But okay, I guess so. Yeah, the space center is tilted that way. That's interesting. So this direction is east. I'll have to keep that in mind. We do have a pad, by the way. It's up there, though. And that's close to the runway. I should have flown by it. But anyway, this is how it looks alongside at a better height. And here, I think you'll agree, it looks pretty darn nice. Hopefully you agree. Anyway, let's keep climbing and see what we can do with this plane. First space plane in this particular install. We don't have a whole lot of kerosene to work with and we definitely can't bring it down. Heck, we can't even control it in orbit. We've got no RCS yet. This is a fully Faramir space plane. Okay, very transonic. And we're past Mach 1. Okay, I'm letting it dip a bit. Don't have a whole lot of kerosene left. This is a little bit early to have been breaking. Oh, atmospheric God Pilot's not cooperating great either. A little bit early to break the sound barrier. But yeah, we have high dynamic pressure because of that. Okay, we're gonna try smart ASS with this. Just gonna get wiggly. That's expected. Uh oh, too wiggly. Uh, no roll. Uh oh. Okay, that must break off pod help. Okay. Fine. Rocket engine. Okay, going up. Right, well, do we have enough? That's the question. Please don't roll all over the place. Oh, it's rolling. There's no reaction wheel here, though. <laughs> I forgot about that. So, and we don't have RCS. So, having only one engine, we would roll. I mean, once, especially once we don't have aerodynamic surfaces working. Uh, I think we're gonna be short. Well, there's the island runway. Now there's the volumetric clouds around here. Seem to have a different feel to them than in real solar system with RSS Reborn. Well, we might need to fill up the tanks and make the wing larger to get off the runway in order to make this work. Definitely gonna overshoot the island runway. And we didn't really make it into space either, but that's probably for the best so that we can keep control of some kind. And I'll activate atmospheric all pod again. Well, let's keep coasting and see where this ends up. Landing should not be so bad, potentially, if there's land. It's not always easy to tell on this thing. The land color is really not very distinctive in the map view with JNSQ. There is a little bit of methane oxygen left. Aro still does its residuals here. I don't know if I can turn... Well, I mean... Ooh. 
Uh oh. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Uh oh. Well, okay. Let's maybe have Smarty SS try to just point prograde. We've clearly had an issue. Shouldn't have even tried to turn. Not too worried about uh, overheating, of course. These speeds are fine for anything from realism overhaul, right? So this is not using any sort of special J and S Q volumetric clouds. This is just the stock volumetric clouds from BlackRack. Well, we're obviously stalling. Oh, come on, come on, uh, no, stay there, stay there, uh... Oh, missed that one. You will be aerodynamic, you will be. Uh, uh... Okay, okay, there we go. So, um, that away. <laughs> well, I have no idea what my landing speed is. Probably shouldn't have extended the landing gear at so close to the speed of sound. But we probably could do a slowing down. Looks relatively flat, and on the bright side, this isn't like KSP2 landscape, which will kill me instantly in numerous ways. Remembering that the last time I did anything around Kerbin was KSP2, so. There is the sort of random scatter trees. No, oh, we're not using much pitch authority. Okay. All right, brakes. All right, no problems. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Uh, landing gear might need to be moved further back. But all right. So anyway, that was the first attempt of the space plane, but the main point was the terrain. Uh, tell me what you think of implementing that with Kerbin uh, instead of Earth could be interesting. I do want to plop Edwards Air Force Base, which I have somewhere in the desert. And they do still have deserts around here, right? I just can't see anything. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell where the deserts are anymore. So anyway, those are the developments in the JNSQ slash RO install. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.